In the beginning was the dog. The real name of Jehovah is a rover. Adam's rib is buried in the garden. The Martian. There was a young creature from space who entered a three-legged race. He was not very fast. In fact, he came last because he was a bag of oven-ready chips. This poem is called Luton, and um, it's about the town of my upbringing, and it's also about the conflict between my working-class origins and the middle-class status conferred upon me by a university education. Luton. I remember Luton as I'm swallowing my crouton. The next one's a bit more serious. In the playground, the children are playing a game of kiss chase. And one of the children, who seems to want to be chased after, calls out above the screams and laughter, Don't chase me! Don't chase me! And nobody does. It's not much of a planet that everybody leaves. There's not a lot of faith about, but I am someone who believes that what we need without a doubt is more of Jimmy Greaves. The more I get of Greavesy, the more my life achieves. So give me more of Greaves, that, and give me more of Jimmy Greaves. Imagine Jimmy's picture in every picture frame. Imagine all religion praising Jimmy's name. The world is just a candle and Jimmy Greaves is the flame. I want you give me Jimmy. It used to be his turn of speed, he left defences in a daze, now he rents his turn of phrase, and when I turn on my TV and Jimmy's there, my spirits raise, and when I'm in a blazing row and I'm in the process of rolling up my sleeves, I just think of Greavesy, and he relieves me. More and more of Greavesy is what this country needs. He's the man to sow the seeds of sanity. He's off the booze, he's on the ball, he's got a message for us all. He can help humanity to heal itself, to haul itself from this self-destructive stupor. He's what you call a trooper, I think he's blinking super. He's the trooper, super duper, so don't give me Henry Cooper, cause he isn't Jimmy Greaves. People say that I'm loopy, and they think I'm nothing but a Greavesy groupie. But I tell them... You're not fit to wash Jimmy Greaves' moustache. This is a poem about my mum's dog. Yorkie won't go for a walkie. The only order he'll obey is stay. The only trick he does is sit. He's a rip-off. Mr McNaughty, the laundrette attendant, left his laundrette to get himself a packet of fags. These boys entered with some laundry bags and they unloaded a number of small dogs into one of the tumble dryers. As they fumbled with the faulty coin mechanism, Mr McNaughty returned. Oh no you don't, he cried, pushing them aside and pulling out the dogs. These dryers are for washing machine customers only! Well-bred dog, this one's called. One evening, John came home from work, went into the kitchen to make himself a nice cup of tea, and on the kitchen table, in a plastic bag, he discovered a large sliced loaf with one of the crusts missing. Actually, it was a very large sliced loaf, about the size of a rabbit hutch, and John, who lived very much alone, knew that he hadn't put it there, and wondered who had. Just then there was a rap-a-tap-a-tap -tap at the front door, it was John's new next-door neighbour. Excuse me barging in, she said, but you haven't seen my dog, have you? What does it look like, inquired John concernedly. Like a large sliced loaf, replied the neighbour. 
"'With one of the crusts missing?' asked John. "'Yes,' replied the neighbour. "'She had a fight.' John smiled, went out into the kitchen, and returned with the mysterious loaf. "'Is this her by any chance?' he asked. And the neighbour said, "'No.' I said, Pat, you are fat, and you are cataclysmically desirable, and to think I used to think that slim was where it's at, well, not any more, Pat, you've changed that. You love yourself, you flatter yourself, you shatter their narrow image of the erotic. And Pat said, what do you mean, fat? Um, from Pat, we move on to another friend, Colin. From the very beginning, I loved my glasses. The eye test made me feel important. I wanted to be colourblind as well. For some reason, I was never teased about them as a child, not even at the grammar school, where daily they would mock my briefcase because it was not made of leather. As I recall, there was only ever one boy who jibe aimed at my glasses, and this a fairly oblique one. Oi, double glazing. Where did you get that plastic briefcase? In adult years, I got a lot more trouble. On one occasion, a rabble threw a rubble at my glasses. It was after this that I decided to take action. I bought myself a leather briefcase, and the next day set out to face my building site tormentors. Somehow the briefcase in my hand was a stand against a land which had gradually lost its magic for me. A joyful absurdity in the face of the tragically commonplace. As I approached the contractors, for once it felt like my world again. Okay. What have you got in the briefcase then, four eyes? Was the question. Power. Power, lads, was my reply. The power of the human imagination. And I walked proudly and steadily passed them in a shower of flying masonry. A couple of poems about dogs for you. The second one's set to music, and the first one's set to words. This is the first one. Bad dog. The dog got my glasses the other day. I thought I'd have to chuck them away. But luckily, they were all right. The other one's a bit more serious. This is called Very Bad Dog. Miserable Malcolm from Morecambe had Rottweilers but would not walk them. They were stuck in all day, but no muck would they lay, because Malcolm had managed to cork them. Knee deep in ocean. Something in the ever steady kneecap lapping motion of the ocean moves me to emotion. Something totally and finally benign in the briny makes these four eyes of mine wet with weep as if there was not enough salt water already in the deep blue.
I'm afraid I won't be going to the Edinburgh Tattoo. Because to me, a parade of weaponry and the capacity to hurt is about as pleasing as dog dirt on the shoe. Only poo is easier than the tattoo to get rid of. To you it may be taboo to poo-poo the tattoo. But to me, the tattoo is something to say to tattoo!